Well, this video is going to be brought to you by Stargal, aka my friend Chelsea, because, well, she's the one that paid for this commission. So, thank you, Chelsea. What's up, YouTube? Graver here, and in today's video, we are going to be working on a commission from my friend Chelsea, aka Stargal. Uh, I've talked to her about couple of times on the channel here she is a friend who i play a lot of destiny with along with other video games and other games and such along with uh, my buddy george her brother dave and all my other wonderful wonderful friends from team Daba. but uh she has asked me to kind of as best that i can recreate crimson from destiny 2 and i shall try and put in a picture of it here so Crimson is a hand cannon in Destiny. Um, it does a lot of cool stuff. It quickly regens health, it re auto reloads, and it fires in three round bursts. Yeah, I'm not doing that to this thing because this is a hammer shot. Uh, but I am going to get it as pretty aesthetically close as I can to the Crimson while still keeping the look of the hammer shot, so to speak. The uh, reason for that is... Uh, in a discussion we were having one night, Chelsea was saying how she would really like a nerf gun like Crimson. Uh, similar to kind of how I made the uh, last word for George for his birthday, but I showed her a picture of my Hammershot gun blade that I made, and I'm like, would something like this possibly interest you? And she saw it, and she got very excited, and she was like, yes, that would be awesome. So it pretty much just kind of went from there. So what we're going to be doing is um, I'm basically going to be, it's going to be a full cosmetic workup. Uh, she never really requested any kind of upgrades to anything else. So it is going to be a stock five shot cylinder, the stock hammer, stock spring, stock trigger, all that stuff. If she wants to get an upgrade on it, uh, I mean, she's more than happy to let me know down the line but i think right now it was just she wanted a nice kind of collector's piece but i'm still going to keep in functional in case she wants to plink around the house or something with it so it's fine uh what we're going to do is i'm obviously going to sand this all down i'm uh, going to paint it up i'm also going to be adding metal rivets or metal spike rivets to the blaster itself i've ordered some from amazon and i will get those edited on once i get those and much like my Griever gun blade, I've also ordered the worker accessory piece that looks like that. And whenever the hell that gets here, uh, I'll get that sanded, added onto the piece as well. So I'm going to go over to the workbench because that's normally what I do. It would be very hard to work here because there's nothing there, but going to go over to the workbench, start sanding this up, getting it prepped, and once, as pieces come in, I will work on it. But I'm also going to try and get it prepped as much as I can so that it's not a rush to get it done. So, let's get to it. Okay, I think you guys have seen me break down enough stuff. If you really, really want to see me break down a hammer shot, go check out my painting tutorials or my hammer shot review. Uh, I've stripped it down already um it's almost ready for sanding i still need to wipe down the hammer and the trigger with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get all of the uh what's remaining of the silicone grease off of that also i'm keeping this on hand so that once this is all sanded down i can just wipe it all down get all the dust off of it now for what i have for actually sanding this is a lot of stuff so i have my sanding drum and my dremel here as a precaution god help me i am going to try and hand sand this as much as i freaking can because it turned out really really good on my um sweet revenge that i painted up so i'm gonna try it as best i can on here the dremel is here if i want to try and work through like the really high raised stuff like the nerf the hammer shot and the zombie strike here uh just to kind of get things moving along i'm actually not worried about this little piece here because that will actually be covered up by the knife so that i'm not worried about the 
color scheme for it, uh, which I may or may not in the previous section of this try to add in a actual picture of the crimson, but the colors I'm going to be using are uh, Duplicolor Vinyl Dye as a base coat because there are going to be little white accents over everything and there is a one or two actual white spots on it. Like, if I remember correctly, the trigger guard is going to be uh, painted white. The wood grain on here is going to be white. The tack rail is going to be white. And probably these three dots are going to be white because there are like kind of like these whitish bolts on it. And to kind of mimic the skulls that are actually on the side of the blaster, I have to double check to see if it is both sides or not. But since I have these little um, divots in the actual hammer shot itself, I'm going to use these as the actual skulls. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the sanding done because I want to get that out of the way because sanding is one of the biggest pains in the butt in any kind of cosmetic mod. And I think everyone will agree with me on that one next to maybe very detailed uh, painting or taping for painting. Uh, the majority of this will actually be uh, the Duplicolor Perfect Match Gunmetal that I like to use because this is just a really, really nice gunmetal. I could have used my vinyl gray, my gray vinyl dye, but I am extremely low on it, so that's why I'm going with this. Uh, the other thing is, oh, and I forgot also the cylinder will be white too. Uh, there is also going to be a little bit of red accenting on it, which I'm going to be using this duplicolor, which is, uh, what the hell is this one called? Crap, where'd the sticker go? Okay, well, it says on here it is a Ford color, so it's a Ford red. I want to say I think it's Cardinal red. I could be very wrong on that, but this is going to be mid majority of it is going to be accent it's going to be a little bit of red up here the trigger itself is going to be red and i don't mind actually using the paint for this because the trigger shouldn't get too much abuse on it so i'm fine with that and i may also do the red here on the faux on the faux tape uh just to give it a little bit more of a pop of color now, the only other piece of red, and I don't have this piece because, again, I'm waiting on stuff from Amazon, is the actual um, 3D printed knife that Worker makes. And this is one I got for my personal hammer shot. And the piece that actually attaches the knife to the blaster itself is what I'm going to do red uh, to mimic kind of the attachment point that's on the actual crimson. The gray vinyl dyed piece here is actually going to be gunmetal on the crimson itself. And the blade I am still going to make silver because it's a whitish silver on the actual um, the actual gun from Destiny 2. And I just want to kind of showcase that it is supposed to be a knife and not just an added piece of like plastic. Even though it is, but you, you know what I mean. Anyway... All the sanding stuff I got, I got a 220 sanding block, which probably needs to be replaced. Uh, a 400 sanding block, which again, also probably needs to be replaced. Some 220 uh, flexible sandpaper, which I really love, and it's also low, and I gotta get some, I, I need to get a lot of stuff for the shop. Uh, some 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, some older pieces, which I'm gonna use to try and help with the emery slash sanding stick uh, to get in some nooks and crannies. I'm also going to try using a scouring uh, pad because I've seen it used a couple of times to kind of like smooth out uh, stuff that's sanded, which is basically what I use the 400 grit sandpaper for, but I'm going to give it a shot and see how well this works out because I got a bunch of them from the dollar store. So we'll see what uh, happens with that. But oh, and I, again, I also got my uh, Dremel here to just go over the high spots that I may not be able to get from hand sanding if it takes me way way too long but 
that's where this stands. I'm going to get started sending on this and yeah. Okay, so quick update on how things have been going. I've been sending one side for maybe about an hour or so uh, with uh, grit, determination, and just downright um, unforgiving uh, stubbornness. I actually was able to stand down smooth hammer shot and zombie strike. So I'm definitely going to give it a shot on the nerf logo. Now, in the right light, you can still see, or at least I can see. I don't know how well you can see it on camera. But I can still see the hammer shot lettering. But when I run my fingers over it, I don't feel anything. And that could also be because my fingers are covered in the... Uh, plastic dust so it could be that overshadowing it but the plastic's a little darker hopefully since these will these parts are going to be gunmetal and so is that i'll be able to actually cover that up not just with the vinyl dye but also the gunmetal so it definitely will not show through uh fingers crossed on that one so i'm gonna get back to it uh in case you're wondering what I'm doing while I'm doing all of this, I'm actually watching a great movie. One of my uh, favorite movies, uh, thank you, Dad, uh, Escape from New York. It's a 1981 classic starring Kurt Russell. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Great movie. But I'm going to get back to my movie and sanding, and I'll see you guys momentarily. Day two. Okay, so just quick update it's actually the next day for me but for you guys it's just a matter of seconds i've gotten one side of the shell all sanded down um this is only with the 220 and i did a wipe of rubbing alcohol on it just to clean off all the dust the majority of what i need painted or sanded is sanded and it looks really good really smooth um i'm gonna still go over this with the 420 i still have this side to do which is going to be what i'm going to be working on right now and yeah, I am kind of taking my time with this because I really can't move forward until I get the parts. But, you know, I have one side sanded. I have the hammer sanded. And if you're wondering why this looks different and why the plunger and the spring rod aren't on it is because I want to actually paint this separately without having to worry about the, uh, the pieces on it. And as I was trying to remove this pin on this hammer shot, I cracked it. But thankfully, I had one in my parts bin from one of the many other hammer shots I have taken apart. So, uh, thank God I had a replacement. And I'm also thinking, because I did do a little bit of when I was going over everything, these two pieces are supposed to be the gray gunmetal. And I'm thinking I do still have some of my charcoal gray uh, vinyl dye. And since these are going to be the most movingest parts next to the cylinder, which is going to also be vinyl dyed, rather than risk painting these, I may actually just put a coat of the gray vinyl dye on these, dye on these, and just see how well it comes out. Because worst case scenario is I can always resand it and just, you know, spray paint it the gunmetal. But I'm thinking since the gunmetal and the dark gray would be close enough that. I may just do these gray since it's going to be, you know, a lot of wear and tear on it. And where paint will chip, vinyl dye, as long as it adheres right, normally doesn't. So we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, I'm going to start getting, I'm going to get started on this and I'll see you when I'm done with that. Okay, so the 200 grit sanding is all done. I've almost exhausted my supply of sanding sticks and 200 grit sandpaper still have to do the 400 but that hopefully won't take as long um but on the plus side you'll see these two little bags here because i got the spikes that i'm gonna need or that i'm gonna be using now i was hoping these were gonna be a little bigger but they're gonna still work for what they're needed for my only thing is though i gotta figure out where a, where I'm going to put them, and B, how I'm going to get them to screw through this. So, I have to make sure I don't hit anything structural like these posts here, but then I also have to make sure that I get through 
that part of the shell in order to hit this part of the shell so I can actually screw these in properly. Um, now these are the spikes that I'm going to be using. They're a pretty much a gunmetal color. Uh, there's, they were listed as black on the um, on Amazon. Um, if anyone's interested, I'll throw a link in below of what I actually used for these. Um, but like I said, they're a little smaller than I wanted, but that's fine because uh, Chelsea, who wanted this, was kind of concerned about a hard spike on it to begin with. And, I mean, as long as she's not hitting people with it, it's going to be fine. So I have to figure out how I'm going to do it. I want to put three up here because on the barrel there are three up there, and then it's the other five are on the body itself. I just have to figure out the positioning of it. So I may do it like there and there and then put these spikes up here and then just do like the three, two, three pattern. Sorry, I realized I completely blocked that, but these also aren't sticking on very well, obviously, but I'm going to figure it out. I'll drill my holes and show you how I got through the back there, which I have my... Uh, drill bit for my uh, Dremel here and I also somewhere um, I put my, one of my uh, grinding bits which is a bit of a cone so this way I can just kind of grind out like a little bit once I get my whole position so um, I may film that um, I'll show you when I'm doing that in a moment or you'll see it in a moment I want to get this figured out first before I start putting holes in the shell so I'll see you in a second. A few minutes later. Okay, I know there has to be an easier way to do this, but this is the ass backwards way that I figured this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to space the spikes out by about 1.2 inches. Thank you, Arlene, for bringing this caliper to the workshop. It helped out wonderfully. Um, I spaced these two out by they're about 2.4 inches and in between a and the middle one is about 1.2 inches this is going to be 1.2 inches apart and they're like offset by the middle one by half an inch on this uh, about 0.6 of an inch here so there's that Yeah, this looks fine. Wait. Did I math wrong? Oh, crap. Wait. An inch is 12 inches. 1.2 inches. A lot of boring math later. No. I mathed right. I mathed right. Okay. Yes. Yes, I mathed right. Yes, I am mathing right. I am I'm positive I'm mathing right. Okay, I'm not positive I'm mathing right, but I'm almost positive I'm mathing right. Anyway, so these are the positions I'm gonna put the holes in. I'm going to transfer this pattern or I'm going to actually I'm going to level these off because this is just the like the spacing of the holes I still have to make them level on the actual row themselves so I'm going to mark that off in blue so there goes so I'm done with the red this way I don't confuse my markings and the blue holes are what I'm going to drill out and then I'm just going to have to transfer somehow that onto this side of the shell um, I think I may figure out a way to do it because how I kind of line those up is, uh, that's an old drum anyway, is I just use some string and tape, so I may wind up doing that again. <laughs> I hope it works. Okay, so I'm doing this on my phone because it's going to be a lot easier to show you the up close details. One, the spikes work and they look freaking awesome. Sorry if this is really loud, but I'm just like super excited that this worked out so nicely. Uh, the inside of the shell, you can see where I had to do a lot of the dremeling work. And 
I got to say this was a bit of a pain in the ass, but it all worked out in the end, which I'm very happy with. Also, if I knew it was going to be this nerve wracking and that much shell work to just try and get these things to fit. Oh, I would have charged you more money, Chelsea, but it's neither here nor there. It's done. It's done. You've paid for it. This is the work you're getting. This is going to be awesome. Um, I still, I, I'm, I'm just ecstatic with this. I still have to do this side of the shell, which I'm not happy with, but this is done. This is awesome. Yes. Uh, once these go on permanently, I will wind up putting uh, some super glue in the thread locks because I got to say these things are pretty well tightened in. Like I don't feel like they're going anywhere, but that's just going to be my own peace of mind that, and maybe also just put some dabs of hot glue on the inside here uh, just to also hold them in place so that they don't rotate. But I'm super stoked where this is going. Um, next thing you'll see is probably going to be paint and final assembly because this is basically the last bit of the shell work that I have to do other than resanding this down with 400 grit. So next thing you'll see is me putting this all back together, putting on the, um, maybe I'll actually show you how I thread uh, the spikes on at that point and I'll give you the final results after that. So... This is coming along very nicely now. I'm very happy with this so far. I'm just, I'm over the mood with these spikes. I don't know why, I just am. Okay, enough gushing, back to work. Several days later. Okay, so the majority of the painting is done at this point, And I have to say that I am like super stoked at how this came out. Like, I haven't been this excited about a project in quite some time. The paint came out really, really good. Um, the white definitely took a couple of coats to actually make sure it's stuck. Uh, next time I do this, I may do a dark or or I may do the normal gray vinyl dye first. And then maybe do a white over it. Um, but yeah, I have to say the paint came out wonderfully. So... What I'm going to do is I'm actually thinking about omitting this piece. So this may not be going back on it. I haven't 100% decided. I have the cylinder all put back together. I'm ready to install the spikes on it. The, I'm still waiting on that stupid knife from Worker. Um, but as soon as that gets in, I'll be able to attach that. I don't need to disassemble the blaster at that point for it because... It just goes right on the outside of it. Uh, it's just that nice one piece of cosmetic. Uh, last thing I'm going to do, honestly, before I also do that is just because it is a commissioned piece and I think it would be a nice little touch. I'm going to actually sign the inside of it. I did try signing right here and then it got painted over. So I'm just going to re-sign right over it. So... There it is, an official Griever 2112 commission mod. So, I'm going to put the spikes on, get this all buttoned up, and you'll see what it looks like in a moment. Okay, so the piece from Worker finally came in, and... I'll admit I kind of got a little ahead of myself and I went ahead and I already painted it. Uh, it was the same way I did the rest of the blaster originally. The white vinyl die, the uh, gunmetal for these spots here. And I, after my kind of looking at it again, I realized it'd be silly to kind of do the whole thing red because it would just be too overpowering when, when you look at crimson itself it just has like a little bit of red holding it on so i wanted to do a minimal amount of red kind of holding the knife on so it this way it will just like kind of all blend together so it just has it looks like oh it's just being held on by this little piece so it'll make it look a lot neater uh the overall like construction build quality from this is not terrible I have to say, though, I'm a little, I don't want to say disappointed, but it is kind of what it is since it is a 3D print. I do see a couple of issues here, 
but for the most part the knife itself looks really good the print quality other than those hiccups are really good as well and it's stupid simple to install it's three pieces uh two plates and this part here and it just all snaps kind of on so to speak uh i've pre-screwed on this plate to the knife half just so you guys can see one just how freaking awesome this all looks together now but also you can see how it just fits in perfectly right here there's no shell work no modifications or anything like that you have this piece here which just fits over whatever the tube is and right there the dead space that's in there so you put on the other side and then once you screw it together that's pretty much how it holds onto the blaster itself as well so again no no real shell modification it's just it, it basically just kind of holds itself on there because you've screwed it on on two sides and you kind of like filled in the dead space in between it so that's where it holds on to so i mean i gotta say it conceptually this is a honestly a great friggin design and i'm really happy with it and now i can give you finally after like a month of working on this thing my final thoughts before it goes to chelsea okay and here it is the completed commission build crimson um honestly for i have to say i'm absolutely floored with how well this came out and that's not you know me being surprised that oh man i did a good job but just for the fact that there were so many things that could go wrong with this but thankfully did not <laughs> because one the hammer shot not being able to split um as you saw earlier it definitely caused some creative ideas of how to make sure i can get the spikes in and all that uh also making sure that the paint job looked good without being overtly saturated with either too much red or too much gray and just trying to find a nice balance amongst everything and i have to say again it just it came to it, it just came together so nicely i'm just very very happy with how well it worked out and you know well i know this will most probably be a display piece for the most part in the end which is totally fine this is gonna this is chelsea she can do whatever she wants with it but if she does want to it's still completely 100 percent functional so chelsea i really hope you enjoy this this is going to be on its way to you by the time this video comes out you should you will have already received it because i'm holding off on releasing this video until you actually get it because honestly i think that's just only fair so that's going to be it for this video and if you enjoyed this video please as always throw us a like and subscribe leave a comment down below let me know what you think of the crimson build and don't forget to click that little bell icon otherwise you may not know when me and arlene are doing some our silliness here on the channel also, if you happen to be interested in maybe wanting a commission from moi, uh, please definitely reach out. Uh, all my contact information is down below. You can also reach me at uh, griever2112 at gmail.com. And let's see what we can work out. If we can, cool. If not, hey, no big deal. But I digress. Again, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Later.